We are looking at Aristotle's book on the categories, probably the earliest book in metaphysics that we have. And what he's doing in this book is ontology. He's roughly taking an inventory of what exists. And if you're going to take an inventory of a store or a business or what have you, you, you need to organize it, right? You need to put things into categories. And so the first question that Aristotle is pursuing is what types of things exist? Now, he's also asking the question, in what ways do things exist? Now, this is somewhat comparable to the pre-Socratic quest for the arche of all things, but it certainly is not trying to find that unique one substance. He's clearly not a monist in that sense. And so through the book, Aristotle takes an inventory of what types of things exist and how they exist. Now, he is trying to identify the primary substances, right? That's the task of the pre-Socratic. So in that sense, he's carrying on that quest. And he's asking, what are the most basic entities of existence? What are the most fundamental things that exist? Aristotle has two approaches to this described in the categories, and the, I'll call this the first method, and that is a list. I think it's the most easy to understand approach that he takes. So we have substances, a man, a horse, that particular oak tree. So these have the characteristics of being able to take contrary properties at various times. So one and the same substance could both be cold at one time, but hot at another time. Could be wet at one time, but dry at another time. So substances are things that continue to exist through these changes. Well, what else should we use to categorize things that exist? Aristotle says quantity is an area, a category. So we could use terms like many or few or specific numbers like two or 17. We could also talk about the quality that something has. A color, for example, being red or crimson. A characteristic such as being wise or grammatical or cold. Those are examples of qualities that things have, common things that we would identify as properties properties that something could have or could lack, which is important later. He also describes relations, so being half the size or greater than or taller or shorter than something else. Place is a further category. So for Aristotle, in the market or at home or under the sea. Time is another way that things could exist at certain times. Of course, you could have years or months or days or centuries, etc. Position. Now, this is sometimes a, a category that gets translated improperly, I think. Uh, so this and the next one as well. So a position, lying or leaning or being upside down or upright, those are or characteristics that something might have. And then a state, this one is, is very often mistranslated um, as a being armed or being clothed, and that's the only kind of, of feature that could fit into this category. But a state could also include something teetering or, or being compressed, like a spring being compressed. That's a state that the spring is in. The, the water might be boiling, a, a fan might be on or off. Those are states as well. And then finally, a pair, action, that is carrying, throwing, cutting. Recall Plato's Euthyphro where he, where he talked about action and affection, right? Being carried or being thrown or getting cut. So that's a list of 10 and I've a way that I use to recognize them is to start with P, like logicians like to do, uh, P, Q, R, S, T, 
And uh, some of them have two, some don't, but we have uh, place and position for the P's. Uh, R is relation, uh, T is time, S is state and substance. But you also have then two A's, action and affection, and their pairs, they go together. Each of the categories that we just went through have a tree of sorts that you can imagine. So they can be thought of as having a genus and a species and an individual in, within any given category that we, we described there. So that's the structure that those categories have. So for example, animal would be a, a genus. Now, not technically to, in today's biology, that would not be a genus, but a broad genera. And then mammals would be more specific within that and reptiles. And then you can get more specific. So what we would call species today, lions, Komodo dragons, humans. And the lowest level of these, the species, include individuals. So that Komodo dragon or that person, Socrates, or Plato or Aristotle, or that lion. Categories, trees, uh, you could think of uh, all of them being separated down from general to more specific. So for example, quality, we could have th something like color and then red and this individual bit of red on that particular uniform, or we could do this with any of the other categories that we spoke of, certainly you know, place, uh, earth, and North America, and United States, et cetera, and time, and so on. 